I welcome you in the name of Yahweh today. Yahweh is the greatest name anywhere present, written, recorded, or spoken on the surface of the earth. There is no greater word in any other vocabulary, any other language, any other continent, any other country. There is not another word as powerful on the surface of the earth as Yahweh. For he is the creator of the earth and everything there upon the earth. For he is the master. He is the word. He is the Messiah. He is I am I am, which is Yahweh to his people, the white Western European people and nations thereof today, who are the lost sheep of the house of Jacob, who is surnamed Israel. Ish, sons, rough ruling with God. We are his children, his chosen vessels. That's why Jacob's name was changed from singular to plural, from Jacob the man to Israel, the, the plural, or the sons which would come from Jacob, which would constitute tribes, which would constitute nations upon the surface of the earth in a time to come. It's very simple. But for some reason, the simple can't get it. <laughs> but you see, remember, it's Yahweh who does the choosing, not us. All right? I'll start with a little sip of common sense here today. Would you like me to have a drink for the people out here? Out on the outside, yeah, I don't care drink. There. <laughs> Well, 34 years now I've been teaching racial identity. I've had a lot of wonderful friends come and go and cross over back over that river, across that plane, that dimensional plane, through the time warp that is written so prevalently in the books of Adam. For Yahweh said that only those that come from the heavens can return to the heavens, that there is the heavenly and there is the earthly. There's the astral dimension of the earth, which is earthly, where the energy spirits of everything other than Jacob, Israel, their energy forces go into the astral energy force that surrounds the earth. We are celestial as people. We are sojourners upon spaceship earth, for we are the descendants of Adam. And Adam was the son of Yahweh, as recorded in Luke chapter 3, verse 38. And that's why we are a peculiar people above all other peoples of the earth, for we are the sons and daughters of the Most High, blood of blood, bone of bone, flesh of flesh, and spirit of spirit. We are his chosen people. We have a lecture forum today for you. It is something that I have been deciding on for a while because... <clears throat> You know, a lot of people, <laughs> they'll come to me and say, Teacher, or Pastor Wickstrom, well, would you teach this? <laughs> or would you teach on this? Or, or whatever. But I have found in the years that have come and gone in my life that I teach what I am led to teach and what comes to me, what Yahweh gives to me. I want to remind you again that the, the Feast of Tabernacles will be celebrated here on the 13th and 14th of October. And to fulfill it, for he said the Feast of Tabernacles is to be celebrated forever, which is in reality the time of the Feast of Tabernacles when our Father was born upon the earth, came out of the womb of a virgin, in a cave outside Bethlehem. He was not born in a manger with animals on December 24th or 25th as they so decree. He was born in this time of the year, in a wonderful, beautiful time of the year. And it wasn't just Joseph and Miriam. Her name wasn't Mary, it was Miriam. She also had a handmaid with her, all right? So you see, it's a wonderful story that has been distorted it's been distorted as like everything else has been distorted. 
But anyway, <clears throat> people come and they want me to lecture and teach on different subject matter. Next weekend will be two days, and today is not going to be an upbringing of current events in America and in the world, such as a, a historical parchment study with secular understanding on the political and financial aspect of the problems that we have. We know who is behind it. We know where the financial string finally goes to. And it, is, it rhymes with me and you, but it isn't who. It is the Jew. Jew. Yes, absolutely. So today we're going to go into a, a different study about one of my heroes. And I hope he is one of your heroes, too. Because our father Yahweh, praise his great and wonderful name, praise the name of Yahweh to Jacob Israel. Father, awaken your people, the white Western European people, and the nations thereof, not only to who you are and to your glory, but to who they are and to their destiny. And we ask this in the name of Yahweh, so be it. So you see, he is my hero, the person who we are going to speak about today. And I have heroes too. Yahweh is my first hero. You've got to understand this. Yahweh is the greatest hero that anyone could ever want as a hero. And it doesn't matter who you are in that aspect because other races of the earth, even though he is not their father, but he is their creator, he should be their hero too. But he is our father, the father of Jacob Israel, today the white Western European peoples and nations thereof. So today we are going to have a dissertation of lecture on the ancient parchments of history. And you know, we may speak that it is ancient to us, but to Yahweh it's not that ancient, for a thousand years to us is only a day to him. So you see, in reality of time, we have Yahweh <laughs> with the unlimited years that he is old compared to the twilight of us and the twinkling of a fire of a match that is lit and burns and goes out in comparison of times. When we take a look at who we are as a people and as a son of Yahweh and a daughter of Yahweh, and when we come into the fullness of understanding who Yahweh is and the wonderful gifts that he brings to us, bringing us out of darkness, a morbid life into a wonderful light of understanding and happiness, how many more years do you have to really bathe in that substance of truth? For he said, I am the truth, the light, and the way. But you see, I've always stated, as I have always felt very deeply, that you have got to experience and taste the bad before you can really appreciate the good. And this is what it's all about. For this will give you the total substance to differentiate the right from the wrong and the good from the bad, and to then be able to choose the path you decide to walk on, which I hope is Yahweh. So you see, this is what we're talking about today. He is not the Lord. That is just Baal. That means Baal. He is not Jesus, and he is not Christ. Those two were concocted up by the Constantine Roman Catholic Church of witchcraft that it came to be in 325 A.D. upon the earth. Our people, our ancestors, were here 7,800 years ago when Adam was brought here as the son of Yahweh, as I stated, is recorded in Luke chapter 3, verses 38. And then the genealogy of the pureness of the tree of life goes all the way down as to Yahweh when he was born, as was supposed to be the son of Joseph, but he was Yahweh who came to redeem his people. And then from that time on, we can branch down and we must go to the 12 sons of Jacob and to their posterity, for the covenant was handed to Abram, handed down to Isaac. From Isaac, it went to Jacob, Israel, 
and then to the progeny of his children, which would come from the loins of Jacob, who would become great nations in the earth, 12 nations in the earth, not that litter box over in the Mediterranean called Israel. Israel was never a land mass. It is a people. This is what you must understand, and they are the white Western European people today. If you're watching this on DVD or VHS tape or public service television, this is the truth. This is Yahweh's truth. This is the time of a great awakening, not only across the United States of America and Canada, but across the world to the greatness of Yahweh and who we are as a people, and also exposing the children of perdition as the liars, the imposters, the imitators, and the murders of which you call world Jewry today. This is the time when you are seeing history come before your very eyes, that his name would be exalted across the earth by those who love him. And electronically, this is being done on radio and computer. It is being done on DVDs or however you want to say it. And those that hate Yahweh, they are also blaspheming his name from one end of the earth to the other. That is because you have the children of light against the children of darkness, contrary to everything, the darkness of what Yahweh stands for. So you see, we have a study today, and we have a lecture, David the boy to David the king. And why is this so important? Because our father Yahweh said that when he would be born from a flesh body, he would come from the lineage of David. This is extremely important, extremely important. I'm James P. Wickstrom. I am a teacher of Yahweh. P.O. Box 102, Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S, Michigan, 48652. My website is www.jameswickstrom.com. It is Saturday, October 6, 2007. It is Sabbath day. Sabbath day to Jacob Israel. Now, when Yahweh was here in the flesh and born from the virgin in the cave outside Bethlehem, did Yahweh heal on the Sabbath? Yes, he did. And the scribes and the Pharisees tried to condemn him for that. Is this not true? Is not a teaching of Yahweh a healing in its own way to his people? A person can be sick in many ways. He could have a broken leg. He could have pneumonia, or he could be spiritually deprived of the truth, which is a sickness unto itself. We call that Judeo-Christian sickness. And there's a lot of it out here. And the witch doctors who bring that sickness on to the people by not telling them the truth. So you see, to teach is to heal on the Sabbath, one of the most powerful days to witness on the Sabbath in the name of Yahweh. Next. Oh. <clears throat> Western art and literature <clears throat> have an enormous fascination with the figure of King David. The trend begins with the books themselves which devotes more literature to David than to any other character, including Moses and Yahweh in the flesh of what you call the New Testament or the New Parchments. I don't know if you're aware of that. <clears throat> and it continues to the present. The last decade has witnessed the publication of at least six books on David and a heated debate on the question of his very existence. There are many who are trying to say that David did not exist. There are many who are trying to deny that Joseph didn't even exist, that Joseph was even a leader in Egypt. <clears throat> These are all evil soothsayers in the world today, spreading their evil, their evil thoughts and conjures among the masses 
to sow confusion to keep the people separated from the truth. <clears throat> the evidence of the historical David outside of the books, as I refer to the books, I refer to the books, the 66 books. I refuse to call it the Bible because it was named the Bible by the Catholic. And it comes from the Holy Biblica. That's what it means when it was originated as a word, meaning the book of the sun, S-U-N. Sneaky little devils, aren't they? And I refer to it as the books, for there are 66 books that I have in my hands right now. Is there not? Now, in a time past, there were more books, but they have silently removed them, just like they remove any truth from your library or even from your children's learning books in school or whatever else. <clears throat> the evidence of the historical David outside of the books is meager. A fragmentary of aromatic inscription found at Tel Dan in 1993 and 1994, during, uh, dating to 850 BCE, mentions <clears throat> the house of David in reference to the kingdom of Judah. This is an aromatic now. All right? This is very important. Now, at this time, I have a, a picture of David that I'm going to pass around. My copier would not give the image I wanted for the screen, so if you could just focus on this. You got a good shot of this? Okay. You'll notice that this picture of David is not what you would look at as a Jew today with the hooked nose and scraggly hair and dark complexion of the ugliness of what they are as children of perdition. David has the look of a Nordic, Germanic, Celtic, Irish, Scottish king. Would you pass it around, please? I want the people to take a good look at this, all right? <clears throat> I have another picture, as I'm going to be talking, that you can be reviewing of David with his sword, I want you to look at the facial features very, very closely, all right, to understand why I say that we, the white Western European people and nations thereof, are the lost sheep of the house of Jacob Israel. Does he look like a Jew today, or does he look as one of us today? See, these are the things you must look at. Would you please pass that for me? Thank you very much. So you see, we have a study and a lecture of understanding here today and praising the great and powerful name of Yahweh our Father. Now, <clears throat> a similar reference to the house of David has been perceived and partially reconstructed in the Mesha steel from ancient Moab. Another recent proposal that the Egyptian Sishak relief mentions the highlands of David is doubtful. Oh, please. At best, these inscriptions refer to the Davidic dynasty or its province of Judah and say nothing about the person of David. Nor can any archaeological artifact be associated with David with any degree of certainty. Though some archaeologists contend that archaeological remains from the 10th century BCE indicate the existence of a central authority like that described in the books for the reigns of David and Solomon. They would have to be reconstructed even if their names were not given in the books. The books, or what you say, the Bible, therefore remains the primary source of any portrait of the historical David. Have not I told you that these books have nothing to do with religion? They are books of history. And that's why if you have what you call a Bible, and you have no center concordance in it, which gives no time dates, then you think about it as merely religion. You do not realize in your mind that it's history. 
That's why historical dates are given for every chapter in these books. So then they watered them down, and they gave you a so-called Bible that only had the books and the chapters, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or how many there were, with no time equation, no center concordance in the middle for you to garner and garnish more information from the said subject that you are studying. These, this, these are historical books. They are dated, chain of events, times, and the events that are taking place at that time, which are referred to as history books. This is very important. Now, the books, therefore, remains the primary source of the portrait of the historical David. And there are three views of literature relating to David in the books of what you call the Bible, which is erroneous. It is not the Bible. They were referred to as the books of in Aramaic and ancient Hebrew. Now, the three views. View number one, almost half, 73, of the 150 Psalms contain headings associating them with David. You know that David played the harp. You know that David sang songs. Is this correct? He was a master harpist. This is very important. But almost half, 73 of the 150 Psalms, contain headings associating them with David. In English, the typical heading is rendered, quote, a psalm of David, unquote. But the headings are widely recognized as later editions by scribes attempting to connect them with well-known parchment figures. Up just a little. Also, the meaning of the Hebrew preposition translated of or li is differing and might be translated in a variety of ways, such as dedicated to David, or belonging to David, or for the David collection. It could have three different meanings. And then point two, the book of First Chronicles, which is a historical book of chain of events. I'm sure everyone would agree to that, wouldn't you? Thank you. Offers a retelling of the David story contained in First and Second Samuel from a different historical vantage point. With few exceptions, it contains no new information about David. Point number three. <clears throat> Any reconstruction of David's life, therefore, is necessarily dependent on the material about him in 1 Samuel 16 through 1 Kings chapter 2. The books of Samuel and Kings are part of a larger work referred to as the Deuteronomist history. Most scholars believe that the books of Deuteronomy and Joshua, Judges, 1 and 2 Samuel, and 1 and 2 Kings, the former prophets in the Hebrew parchments, were originally written as one giant history, see, history of Israel, the descendants of Jacob Israel. The division into books occurred much later. This history elevated Israel, the white Western European people today, according to the program laid out in the book of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Israel, Ish, I S, Ish, son, Ra, ruling, El God, sons ruling with Yahweh. That's what that means. It's not a landmass. I'm going to take this to you, I'm going to burn it into you for your understanding. This is extremely important because there are children of perdition of the wicked one who say that they are Israel 
and they live in a land of Israel. Israel was never a land, it was a people. And now I see they're even bringing blacks from Yemen into Israel and saying, oh, we found one of the lost tribes. <laughs> well, it, yeah, they found a lost tribe of perdition, all right. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'll tell you, isn't that something? Oh, boy. Now, 